subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now we look at how we are going to represent systems using Laplace transform, right? From uh, till now we saw that how we are representing signals using Laplace transform. What is going to be the Laplace transform of different signals? What is going to happen if the uh, signal is a causal signal? What uh, how, uh, what is uh, the ROC of the Laplace transform and so on. Now we look at what happens to Laplace representation of a system. Okay, so uh, we we've already seen that out put yt of a continuous time LTI system is going to be equal to convolution of the input xt with the impulse response ht right that is yt was equal to xt convolution with ht now and the laplace domain also we also saw that in s domain this ys is going to be equal to multiplication of laplace of input and impulse response okay we saw that in laplace domain this convolution is going to convert to simple multiplication operation so y is going to be xs into hs right so i can say that i can from this equation i can write that h of s is going to be equal to y of s upon x of s that is Laplace transform HS of my impulse response HT, this H of S. This is referred as system function or transfer function of the system. System function or transfer function. Okay, so uh, as we've seen for H of T, that most of the properties of the system can be determined using this H of T. Similarly, using H of S, we can determine a lot of properties of the system. Okay. So in time domain, we saw that impulse, this uh, system can be defined completely using its impulse response h of t. When an input x of t is applied to the system, we get an output y t, which is convolution of x t with h of t. Now, if you just transform all of them in Laplace domain, then what is going to happen? This system can be completely defined using its transfer function h of s and input x of s is applied then we can just calculate this output y of s by multiplication of x of s and h of s okay so uh, what are we saying is system function hs this hs is going to completely characterize the system okay why because this is just the transform of h of t which characterizes the system completely okay we've seen this already right uh, let us look at the characterization of the LTI system now. Like how are we going to define, how can we set different properties about the system, talk about different properties of the system using the H of S. Right. So first property that we look at is causality. How can we talk about causality using H of S is? For a causal continuous time LTI system, we know that HT should be 0 for T less than 0. Right? That means that this HT, this impulse response should be a right-handed signal. Okay, since we need that this H of T is, should be a right-handed signal, signal, that corresponding requirement of H of S is that ROC of H of S ROC of H of S must be of form, must be of form, real part of S greater than sigma max. Okay. And you know that, you know that this ROC of any signal is not going to contain any poles. The ROC of any Laplace does not contain any poles. So we need that poles of, what do we want? Poles of a causal system. Causal system must lie must lie to the must lie to the left of roc in s plane okay i'll uh, i'll tell you why this statement is important after one step why we need that poles must lie in left okay why how is it determining it is a determining factor right so uh, we need that ROC in the S plane should be right to all the system poles, okay, for a system to be causal. Now, what do I need for stability of a system? 
so already we know that for a system to be stable we need that its impulse response should be absolutely integrable okay we we saw that for a system to be stable we we want that its uh, impulse response st should be absolutely integrable okay fine now see what is h of s going to be h of s can be defined as integration minus infinity to infinity h t to the power minus s t d t now what am i saying uh, see you know that s is equal to sigma plus j omega i say keep sigma zero just put s is equal to j omega right then what is going to be what is going to be the magnitude of this h of s just putting mod on both the sides so this is going to be h of t e to the power minus j omega t dt I'm checking this, uh, checking the stability of the system at j omega axis. Okay, that is what I'm doing. So using Schwarz inequality, I can say that this integral is going to be less than or equal to mod of h t. Mod of this e to the power minus j omega t is going to be one, right? This is a complex number. Mod of a complex number is going to be one. So this is going to be this one. And we already know that this is less than infinity. Okay, we we've seen that for a stable system, this is less than infinity. Okay, so what can we say? Therefore, we see we see that if the system is stable, if the system is stable, or for a system to be stable, H S H S should converge for H S should converge for S is equal to j omega, right? what can we conclude for a stable continuous lti system for a stable continuous lti system roc of h of s roc of h of s must contain j omega axis it is a compulsion to contain the j omega axis right why did we say that see when we put s is equal to j omega only for that value of s this 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 uh, this term converged okay this laplace transform converged if this uh, s if this roc does not did not contain j omega axis the laplace transform is not going to converge or this condition is not going to be satisfied so what are we saying if you want the system to be stable then roc of h h of s must contain j omega axis right and for causal system we said that the poles of the system must lie to the to the left of roc now if i just combine these two characterize characteristics these two properties if i want causal and stable system then i am saying that all poles of h of s must lie all poles of h of s must lie in the left half of s plane to the left of j omega axis okay that is they all they all must have negative real parts must have negative real parts okay because uh, see we wanted roc to be of the form real part of s greater than sigma max and we need j omega axis to be included so we need that sigma max should be less than 0 right that is what we 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 want okay so for a system to be causal as well as stable what should happen all the poles of h of s must lie in the left half of s plane to the left of j omega axis okay if all the poles of a system have negative real parts only then we can say that the system is causal as well as stable okay that is why i said this is, this uh, statement is has a meaning right so to check the causality and stability of system we just need to check if all the poles are negative real parts or all the poles are lying in the negative half uh, of s plane only or not right so now we are going to look at lcc de we've already looked at lcc de uh, so we going to see now system function for systems described by okay so now we want to see system functions for lti systems described by linear coefficient linear constant coefficient differential equations described by lcc de okay so we uh, discussed that a continuous time lti system with input xt and output yt satisfies this kind of general linear constant coefficient differential equation where this is summation k is equal to 0 to n ak dk yt upon dt to the power k 
equal to summation k is equal to 0 to m bk into dk xt upon dt to the power k. Right, so we saw that any uh, any LDI system can be described by this kind of equation. Now applying Laplace transform to both the sides. So if you just apply Laplace transform and use the differentiation property of Laplace transform to both the sides, you are going to obtain this LHS is going to become summation k is equal to 0 to n a k s to the power k into y s. See, uh, we have seen that differentiation in time is uh, creating multiplication in s in s domain. Right? That is why we are going to obtain equation of this form and this is going to become k is equal to 0 to m b k s k x s. Now, if I just try to find out h s, h s which was defined as output transform of output upon transform of input this is going to become summation k is equal to 0 m b k s to the power k upon summation k is equal to 0 to n a k s to the power k okay now see h s is always going to be rational okay and since uh, we are not defining roc here but uh, this, it must be uh, defined okay it must be defined depending on these values to determine causality stability etc okay so this is how you can find transfer function of a system using the differential equation using the LCC DE. Now next what we are going to look is systems interconnection. What if two systems are interconnected? What if two systems are cascaded? What when they are connected in parallel? What is going to happen? Okay, so we are considering two different LTI systems with responses H1, T and H2, T respectively. So we saw that, okay, first we are going to look at cascading. So we saw that when two systems with different impulse responses H1 T and at H2 T are cascaded, then their output Y T and input X T is applied. Then we saw that output Y T output Y T could be if you just want to represent it in form of one one uh, single impulse response single system then we said that this ht can be represented as convolution of these two these two individual impulse responses okay so now what do you say in laplace domain suppose these are two systems described by individual transfer functions combined output is yt input is x xs in laplace domain then if I want to represent it as a single system, single system, then what can I write this single system as? X of S can be written as, sorry, this H of S. H of S can be written as multiplication of individual Laplace transforms of these two impulse responses, okay? So when the systems, two LTI systems with individual impulse responses are cascaded, overall impulse response can be given by multiplication of their individual responses, okay? Now when two systems are going to be connected in parallel, when they are connected parallelly, then what is going to happen? So we saw that when two systems were connected like this in parallel, and same input was applied to both of them. Okay, so what did we say? If we have to represent it in form of one single system. Then what can you write this HT as? This can be written as sum of individual impulse responses. Sum of these two individual impulse responses. So similarly, you can see this using the linearity property also. right? If these two are having these uh, transforms H1S and H2S. right? And one single input is applied to both of them. Then what can you say if I have to represent it in terms of one single system H of S to which this input was applied. What can I say H of S is going to be sum of individual transforms of the impulse responses. Okay, so when the two systems are connected in parallel, then their combined single impulse response is going to be sum of their individual impulse responses. Okay, so this is how we are defining uh, systems using this uh, Laplace transform. 
next we are going to see response of a complex a complex exponential input lti continuous time system